Appearance today, lawyers for President Cyril Ramaphosa officially withdrew his officer's appeal against the state captured judgment and made it clear that Zuma will have to fight the cost order alone. Now, the North Gauteng High Court earlier ordered Zuma to personally foot the bill for his legal efforts to block the release of the then public protector Tuli Madoncela's state of capture report and to have it reviewed. The judges said in that case his legal challenges were ill advised and reckless. Well, to discuss we're joined by Karen Morn from the Financial Mail. Great to have you with us as always in studio. So uh, Ramaphosa, our, our president, has found a way not to pay the, the former president's legal fees in this case, in, in one case. Well, I mean, I think in the circumstances of this case, one must remember that for the North Gauteng High Court to make the decision that it did is really, really unprecedented. And it's really a, a cost order against someone is one of the most, I think, the most severe sanctions a court can place on a person. And remember just a few days before the North Gauteng High Court gave this ruling and said Jacob Zuma must pay for all of this, um, it slammed his handling of, of the Mkasana case, the golden handshake that was given to Mkolisi and Mkasana. And the same judge, Dunstan and Lambo, drawing attention to what he described as the president's, former president's pathology of litigation. Defend the indefensible on the steps of the court, then you concede, oh sorry I got it wrong, mm -hmm. having spent millions and millions in, of rands in taxpayers' money. We saw it with Nkandla, we saw it with spy tapes, and then we subsequently saw it to some degree with some of the other, the Nkasana litigation. So I think the judges at that point were really, really aggravated. And they said that this is clearly the state capture case where, according to the court, the president, former president, was solely going about that litigation to protect his own interests, to protect his son, Dudazane, to mm -hmm. protect his friends, the Gupta family in a baseless case, pointless, reckless case, the court needed, needed to send a strong message. And I think Ramaphosa, looking at that, having gotten legal advice, would have been crazy for the presidency to then intervene, even though it had the option to do so, and say, oh, no, we're going to try and defend a person who's already been found to defend the indefensible. I think they made a wise decision here. Yeah, because uh, even for Jacob Zuma to get this reversed, he'd have to take the president to court now and, and pay for that. So he's in a very difficult position. Well, I mean, this, this is a huge issue because we know the DA has bought this application. It wants uh, former President Zuma to pay back the money that's already been spent on, on the spy tapes litigation, 15.2 million rand. We know another further 17 million was spent on all those other cases where he was fighting the search and seizure warrants on his property and his lawyers. He was fighting the mutual legal assistance request to Mauritius. He was fighting the Nicholson ruling. There were multiple, multiple, multiple cases, all funded by the taxpayer. DA is saying, you know, these are all baseless cases. You must pay it back. And we want this font of taxpayer money that you've had access to to dry up. We think this is illegal. Now, what's interesting, of course, Francis, was when Ramaphosa was asked about this by the EFF and the DA, he said, well, sort of legally bound to do this unless this issue is taken on review, which was kind of a subtle or not so subtle way of saying, let's see what the courts do with this. And of course, gives him political breathing room where it's not his decision to, to turn the taps off. But it's the It'll be a court. A, Okay, but in the interim, the, the, fonta the fountain uh, is still flowing because the state is paying for that corruption case uh, that, that kicked off today. The, the debate has always been, uh, well, the argument has always been, if, if you've got long pockets, you can go on forever. So are we seeing the, the beginning of that? We absolutely are because we've, you know, it was uh, Kim J. Kemp, of course, famously in the Durban High Court saying we will fight them in every street, in every room, in every house. The Stalingrad strategy. So you take them on every point all the time and you block effectively that case from going ahead. We've seen the exact same strategy now being employed. We know that uh, the former president will take Sean Abrams' decision to, to go ahead with this prosecution on review. We know if that fails, he will then seek a permanent stay of prosecution where people like former President Thabo Mbeki, may well be called as witnesses. If that fails, he will then bring a challenge against the NPA's decision to try him for racketeering. Conservatively speaking, we're looking at another decade of sure. litigation, all funded by the taxpayer. Now, if we look at what's already been spent, it will run into possibly hundreds yeah. of millions of rands. Uh, why are they in court when the whole issue of whether Jacob Zuma can be prosecuted or not is still playing out? Well, 
what he's going to say is that Sean Abrams, he's first of all in a, in a supreme display of irony, he will argue that Sean Abrams shouldn't have made a decision about his case because Sean Abrams' appointment, as you well know, is now the subject of a constitutional court decision. Was his appointment He's invalid? Possible, possibly on his way. And out. of course, that was a consequence of, of President Jacob Zuma's admission that, you know, I actually did an illegal golden ha handshake deal with Mkolisi Mkhasan. Of course, the, course, the, court, the High Court saying that it very much suggested that that was because he wanted Mkolisi out the, out, uh, Mkhasan out the way and he wanted a more pliable national director of public prosecutions in Sean Abrams. Um, the Constitutional Court now de de deciding whether or not Abrams' appointment is invalid or not. But, of course, Zuma now ironically arguing that because of that, why did Sean Abrams make the decision? So we know that that will be the first kind of pivot point for his, his legal challenge. And he'll also argue that his representations, which have been consistent throughout this process, that he is the victim of a political plot, that the prosecution against him again uh, against him was brought in bad faith, that this was a mechanism utilized by Thabo Mbeki and his followers to force Jacob Zuma out of politics, out of political life, by hanging this hammer over his mm -hmm. head and saying, you know, go away, good, you know, slink back into the night and this case will go away, which of course um, he refused to do and it didn't. Um, he's going to say Sean Abrams didn't apply his mind. And what's interesting, of course, we've never really, we, we're seeing a similar thing with some of the TRC cases where we're seeing people being prosecuted for cases which came before the TRC where amnesty was denied and now decades later we're seeing those prosecutions come into place. But, you know, there are questions about 18, you know, two, nearly two decades down the line. Mm. Um, is is what happen, is what is happening here actually fair or is it in the interest of justice and i think that's going to be an interesting point yeah. to debate and and the longer it runs the more he can argue justice delayed is is justice denied and and then we saw today outside the court it wasn't an insignificant showing of of support and he had a chance to talk about the charges uh, is is this ironically a way for jacob zuma to regain some of that lost political clout I think the interesting thing is, is that Jacob Zuma has made much of the so-called victim narrative and, and people will often undermine a lot of that. But I think he does have a point on one issue. Why wasn't he tried with Shabir Sheikh? The entire trajectory of this country's history would have been fundamentally changed. Bulalani Muka's own prosecution team said, put this man on trial with Shabir Sheikh. It's like me prosecuting uh, Glenn Agliotti for corrupting Jackie Celebi, but Jackie Celebi is not there. Yeah. And this rhetoric about we didn't think we had a winnable case, that's nonsense. You can see on the evidence that was there that there was a case for the, pres the former president to answer, and he should have answered it. And th that mistake is at the heart of his kind of angst and anger, because in Jacob Zuma's eyes, and he's put evidence on the table to this effect, this prosecution was used as a way to try and force him out of political life. And he refused to bow the, to that pressure. And that kind of anger has driven his reaction to this case mm. ever since. And I think the courts are going to have to deal with this as this matter proceeds. Yeah, saying outside court, he's being persecuted. Thank you so much, as always, Karen Morn from the Financial Mail.